Hey there guys, welcome back, hope you're all doing well. This is Chetan here from Design Pilot and I am back again today with another tutorial. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how you can make a really cool and a fun looking tooling to refresh micro interaction using Adobe XD and After Effects. We're going to be designing the user interface in Adobe XD and we're going to get into After Effects to animate this thing. It's really fun, really interesting, a lot of cool techniques that you guys can learn if, in case you want to learn about creating micro interactions or animations in After Effects. So without any further ado, let's get started. Okay, so here I am on Dribble, and uh, this is the original creation or the inspiration to make this tutorial from. As you can see on the screen, it's a simple but a nice and a beautiful looking uh, animation. As you can see, the notch over here has been appropriately used, but as per the guidelines, Apple advises us not to use the notch for such kind of animations. So uh, that's your call. But anyway, this animation is created by Saptarshi Prakash, who is also from Bangalore. And uh, he is one of the designers at a company called Zeta. So if you guys want to check him out, check it out. Uh, if I take you to his profile, you see we get we got a lot of cool, real uh, amazing uh, animations, interactions, and UI designs. So definitely check them out. Links in the descriptions. So let's get into Adobe XD and get started. Okay, so here I'm in Adobe XD, and uh, as you guys know, Adobe XD is now free. So don't worry, you can, you can just go to the website and download it. I'll try to put a link below in the description. And if you guys want to know more about Adobe XD, I'm going to put a video in the description which talks about the 20 features of Adobe XD. So if you guys want to learn everything about Adobe XD and stay up to date, you can check out that video. A big heads up before we get started, this tutorial is going to be a little intermediate. It's not going to be a complete basic tutorial. So if you guys are really interested, I recommend you guys check out, watch this video a couple of times. Or if you guys are interested to learn the basics, I'll put a link down below in the description for other tutorials of mine, which uh, teach you the basics of UI motion and interaction and animation in After Effects. So don't worry about that. All right, so let's get started over here. So all I had to do was create a new artboard. So I just had to go to file and click on new and I had to choose the iPhone 10 uh, preset and click on okay and uh, that's gonna open up this so let me just recreate this pretty quickly and uh, show you how I did it so I'm just gonna copy paste this for a second and I'm gonna delete all this all right now the color is anything that you can choose so the color is up to you but uh, right now we won't be needing the background because we are gonna create our own background in After Effects all right so the first one is we have the status bar uh, or the status bar, whatever you want to call it. Um, I got this from the iPhone 10 UI kit. So if I go to get UI kits and click on Apple iOS, I get the uh, UI kit, which is a huge UI kit, uh, which has a lot of elements for the iPhone 10 and the iPhone 8 uh, and 8 Plus. So you guys can definitely uh, pick that from there. So all I had to do was select that, copy that, and I had to paste it over here. All right. And the next one, we have this text, which is called inbox. So I've just used a simple Roboto font with a size of 20. And I'm going to copy this and paste this as well. And then we have this nice arrow mark, which I guess you will get in the UI kit. Uh, but I'm sure you guys can get this um, anywhere. I'll put a link in the description for the project files uh, down below so you guys can use that out. So I'm gonna copy that and paste that as well. All right. So once we have this, as you can see, we have a couple of elements over here. So the first thing is we have the box. So I'm going to copy that and paste it. So the box, as you can see, is this is the width. This is the height, all right? And I've given it a roundness of eight. You can give it whatever you want, all right? And uh, then we have uh, text, we have logos and so all sorts of stuff. So as you can see, I have this text, uh, which is again, a robot font. And the fill is set to a lighter gray, which says payment receipt. I'm gonna copy that and paste that over here. And the size is set to 14 with the weight set to medium. Then we have the name of the food joint, which is Burger King. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to place that right here again. And this is Robota Bolt 18 with a color which is not completely black. It's a little bit black. So let's say 383838. And the same thing goes for the location. So that's Vega City Place. Uh, Roboto size 12 medium. And then we have the price. All right. And press Ctrl E to paste. All right. Now for the, all those of you who are Indians and want to know how to get the rupee symbol, it's pretty simple actually. If you don't have a key for that on the keyboard, all you can do is uh, let's close this. Uh, let's backspace that. And uh, all you have to do is hold Control, Alt, and 4 or Control, Option, 4 on a Mac. I'm not sure if it works on the Mac, but on Windows, it definitely does. Control, Alt, 4, and you are good to go. And then we have uh, the PNG version of uh, the logo. So let me copy that and paste that. So we have the PNG version over here. 
All right, that's looking good. And we have this faded gray line. Uh, so it's basically a black line with the opacity set to 20. Copy that and paste it, All right? And we have two more texts over here. We're gonna copy that and we're gonna paste that right over here, All right? Let's Control Z that, okay? Paste and uh, copy and paste, all right? So great, all right, so this is simple Robota 14 and this is again Robota 14, so that's pretty much it. So once all this is done, all you have to do is select all this, press Control G to make a group and we can hold on Alt on our keyboard and we can hold down Shift and we can quickly drag this down like so. Uh, if you see the distance between these two, as you can see, it says eight pixels. Uh, so I'm gonna select this card and move this up until I get eight pixels. So as you can see, uh, it says eight pixels over there. If you guys can see, yeah, eight pixels over there. That's looking pretty good. And I'm gonna copy that and bring this down and uh, let's move this again so that it's eight pixels and it is eight pixels. Now all you have to do is change the text and then replace the logos. Now let me just show you a quick tip on how to replace these logos. All right, so if I quickly search for Domino's logo PNG on Google, you can see I uh, can select uh, this uh, picture. And what I can do, I can just hold down, click on it, and I can move it into Adobe XD, and I can drop it right over here, and it says copy, and it's gonna immediately replace it. So that's a quick tip for you guys, if you guys wanna replace multiple objects quickly. All right, so once we have this, we are pretty much ready. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that each of these cards is grouped because each of these are going to be treated as a single object in After Effects. All right. Uh, we can have all these two, all these two grouped as well. So plus control G. So we have basically one, two, three, and we have four elements. So now once we have these four elements, we need to export it so we can put it into After Effects. So if I go to file and choose export, you can see it says export all artboards, but we don't want that to happen. So what we're going to do is we are going to go and select all these four elements go to uh, export and then choose selected control e and now we can choose it save it as a png svg pdf or jpeg i'm going to go for jpeg right now and if you go to jpeg we have two options for design and web design you can export it only at 1x if you go to web you can export it at 2x now i recommend exporting it at a larger size in case your composition size in after effects is pretty big then it won't pixelate and the large size will actually help so i'm just gonna click on 2x for now and i'm gonna click on export my destination is set to desktop all right guys so here i'm in after effects and if i show you the animation as you can see uh this is what we have well, it is not exactly like that because, you know, I had to recreate the entire thing on my own. All right, but uh, it, it does take a little bit of tweaking to get this perfect. Now, I'm not going to show you step by step because it takes a lot of time. And uh, however, I'm going to do a complete uh, breakdown of it and show you all the effects and keyframes and which properties I had to animate. Right, so let's get into the first pre-comp that we have, which is basically the entire animation, all right? So if I turn on the transparency over here, this is what we have. And I'm gonna start right from the bottom, which is basically the shape. So I'm gonna show how it is gonna be originally. All right, so if I go to the composition, choose composition settings, you can see this is 1280 by 720 and 60 frames per second. But I kind of recommend doing it at 30 frames per second because I guess 60 is a little too much. Uh, but you know, I just made 60 this time just in case, you know, something went wrong, but 30 is something that I would recommend anyway. So let's go click on cancel. And uh, okay, as you can see, I have two layers. So first one is the image. So this is basically the background. Now, if you want, you can export this from Adobe XD itself, or you can create it in After Effects. Uh, I exported it from Adobe XD. There's nothing pretty much uh, interesting about this and then on top of that we have this layer which is a mask which I got from Google just search for the iPhone 10 uh, mock-up for Adobe XD and you get this and I exported this as well I leave the project file for this in the description if you guys want to uh, dig in deeper all right so and I placed it exactly where this is all right and all I have to do is go to this track math section if you don't have this you can click here and choose toggle switches and modes all right, and this is gonna give you this different set of uh, properties. And what you have to do is you wanna click on the one which is the image. I'm just gonna call this uh, BG, all right? So if I just unhide this, you can see this is the BG which I am changing the visibility for. You can go and set this to alpha mat, all right? And once that's done, we can put in the status bar. Now the status bar and the main title section over here, I forgot what, what it's usually called, uh, is one single layer. Okay, so now that's done, now comes on the main complicated part. Uh, so as you can see, let me just show you quickly what happens. As you can see, this is what we get. Uh, it is 
not actually tough if you guys have used After Effects before, but let me try to explain how this is done. All right, so the first thing you wanna do is, uh, let's say you go ahead and import uh, your object over here. All right, I'm just gonna place it here for now. The first thing you wanna do is you wanna change the anchor point, all right? So you wanna click here and choose the pan behind tool. And that basically allows you to change the anchor point of your object without even moving it. So I'm just gonna click on the anchor point as you can see on the center over here. I'm gonna hold down shift and then just drag it up to the top part, all right? And then you can select the move tool again to uh, move this object however you want. Now what this does is if I press S on my keyboard and I change the scale, you can see it's scaling from the center of that anchor point, which is exactly what we want, all right? And then what you wanna do is you wanna set this layer to 3D, which means I can now scale it on the Z axis, the X axis and the Y axis, and also rotate it on the Z axis, X axis and the Y axis. So as you can see, I can, X, I can rotate it on the X position, I can rotate it on the Y, axis and I can even rotate it on the Z. Now we will be using the X axis to bring in that kind of an animation. Uh, so that kind of a flipping animation. So let's see how that works. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete this for now. All right, all right. Now let me explain what we have over here. Basically these three layers are the same layers. So first I animated the layer number one, which is one black, all right. Then uh, let me just click on this button to solo it. All right, so as you can see, this is the one which is going to flip, all right? And the next one is the one which is a duplicate of that, but it has a different animation. It comes in with the first layer, but uh, when the second layer jerks, all right, as you can see, the second layer jerks, this black layer, which is basically black number two, it goes back up, all right? And the third layer is basically the animation of the card being revealed like so. All right, so let's focus on these two for now. Okay, so focus on this one for one actually. All right, so if I press U on my keyboard, you can see all my keyframes. Now, the reason I didn't want to make this a step-by-step -step tutorial is because as you can see, I have a bunch of keyframes and it took me a lot of time to tweak it. And let me try to explain as much as I can. All right, so we start off with the position over here and the orientation on the X set to 180 degrees because I need you to imagine it like an envelope that with an open flap. So if the flap is open, it's 180 degrees on the X axis. And when you close the flap, it comes back to zero degrees on the rotation on the X axis. Okay, so as you can see, the position comes down. As you can see, the Y axis changes, all right? At one minute and 30 frames, we are going to have a change in the animation. So it's gonna fall down a little bit faster, all right? So if I play this, you can see, all right? At this frame, it really jerks pretty fast. There we go. And as soon as it jerks, at this frame, it goes back up slightly because it's kind of like a bouncing animation. As you can see, it's a little bit of a bouncing animation, goes back up and the card is jumping from back to the front and flipping at the same time, all right? And as you can see, there is a shift in the color. Now, how do I change the color of this? So basically, if I turn off this layer, you can see this is actually the actual card, the first card that we imported with a fill layer. So all you have to do is go to effects and presets and choose this effect called as fill. If you don't have to, you can go to window and choose effects and presets and you can get the fill. So you can drag that on and you can just change the color to whatever you want. And all you have to do is click on this stopwatch to create a keyframe, which I created over here from dark. And then it kind of slowly becomes light and it becomes even lighter over here. All right, there you go. Now that's the position. Now at this frame, the orientation of the X axis changes. So if I move forward, all right, you can't see it probably. So let me just increase the duration of this. And if I double click on this, you can see it says 359. If I set it to 360, it's gonna give me the reverse animation, which is not what I want. But if you guys want it, you can set it to zero or you can set it to 360, whichever works for you. But for this, I'm gonna set it to 359, okay? And over here, it's set to 359. Now you wanna animate only this layer for now, forget about these two layers, okay? So this is at two seconds and 12 frames. This is at 359. Now, what is this happening? Now we talked about the color change. We talked about this orientation. Now let's talk about, about the scale, all right? Now, at this point where our card is almost 
flat to the surface. I've set the scale to 70, 50, and 70. Now, if you want to change it proportionately, you need to make sure that this link icon is, this constraint proportions icon is visible. And if I change it, that means all the X, Y, and Z axis are going to proportionally change. But if I uncheck this, then it means that I can individually go ahead and change any of the parameters I want. So make sure that's unchecked. So it's 70, 50, 70. And at the end of the animation, I've set it to 120. You can set it to 100, whatever, depending on the size of your composition, 120. There we go. Yes, that's how we animate the scale. So if I bring this down a little bit, let's check it out again. There you go. All right, so it scales into position. Now for the position, so it hits down, it bounces back up, and then you need to move it into the position that you want it. So this keyframe, so this particular keyframe is basically my end position, but to add in a little bit of dynamic effect, I move this a few pixels down. Now the reason I moved it 10 pixels down is because once it hits something, it's gonna bounce back up. So as you can see, at this keyframe, it slowly goes back up. There you go. So let's play that again. So it kind of, let's go, let's zoom this back a little back. All right, so let's play this. So it hits and it goes back slightly up to give it a little bit more of a realistic feel. So that's pretty much it for this part. Now, now I've cut this layer in half and the reason is because um, I want to separate animation and I want separate control over this card on a new layer, which is basically this, which says one main. All right. Now, for example, we have this layer, which is our original layer to be completely full. If you want to split it at this point, all you have to do is hold down control shift D and, or you can use, you, or you can go to edit and choose split layer. All right. And that's going to split that layer in half. And that's all you have to do. Let me just delete that for now. Okay. And let me hide this layer as well. So then when I went on, I went to the main layer, which is the basically the layer, which is the split of this black layer and I removed the fill and then the animation just happened by its own without the fill. All right, great. So that looked pretty realistic. Now let's come back to the second black layer and focus on this. I press U on my keyframe. You can see I have animated only the position. All right. So it comes down and after the jerk, as you can see, after the jerk happens, you can see, we see this gap and at this keyframe, I move this back up and it exits the screen. All right. And uh, that's uh, pretty much it. And uh, let me just close this. You can hold down shift and the slash key to fit the composition to screen. And there you go. We have our animation here. Now, what about these two, the second card and the third card? Let's turn them on. So I've created two more duplicates for these as well. Let me tell you why. All right. So let's focus on this. If I press U on my keyboard, you can see we have keyframes for the second one only. And that's because I have parented the third card to the second card. And if, as you can see, if I, I have this tab, it says parent and link, and that is linked to number two, I can select this pick whip and drag it on two. And it's going to copy all the information from two. And it's going to react the same way the number two card reacts. So at the beginning, the number two card is on top. As you can see, it's highlighted over here. All right. And as and when this, the top card, the first card comes down, this card moves down. All right. And we have a pause and this card basically hits this card, which then moves down harder, which then ends up pushing these two cards. So if I play this, you guys get to get an idea. So basically, as you can see, as soon as this jerk, as soon as this card jerked, it pushed these two cards down and there you go. And this is it. This is the final position of this card. All right. And at this point, I press control shift D and split the layer because I wanted these two cards. Let me open th these two cards, which is basically a copy of the second layer and the third layer to follow the first layer. So as you can see, I've parented to the first main and I've parented to the first main. And because I parented them, when the top card just moves up slightly, as you can see with that motion, let me zoom in a little bit close. As you can see, the top card moves up. The bottom two cards move up as well. And there you go. So we have our final animation. Looking good. All right. So once we have this, you can select all these layers, press Control Shift C, or you, you can go to layer and choose uh, pre-compose and when you choose pre-compose you can set this to move all attributes to a new composition and click on okay and uh, i have moved this to a new composition called as main 
And I've added an adjustment layer, which is a real smart motion blur, which is basically a plugin for realistic motion blur. And for the pre comp, this is what happens. And let me just set this to quarter. Oh, let's set this to third. Let's actually set it to half. All right, uh, we can talk about the pre comp later. Let's talk about the background. So the background is just a solid. So if you create a new solid by going to layer and choose new solid, control Y and just change the color. And then we have this, which is basically the case. So if I turn on this, which is basically the phone itself, and turn it on the background again, and this is the pre-comp as well. So as you can see, we have a little motion to the pre-comp as well, uh, because as you can see, we, we have given the effect of the phone moving when the card moves as well. So as you can see, when the card is being full pulled, the phone also is being pulled. And when the card jerks away, the phone moves back up and it comes back down again, just like a simple bouncing animation. That's it. And uh, that's pretty much it. So I uh, hope you guys really enjoyed this tutorial. If you guys have any, any more, if you guys want similar tutorials like this, let me know in the comment section down below. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I will definitely see you guys in my next video. So then take care and bye-bye.